I want to know if it was a global directive or something the Australian stores have just taken initiative on. And I don't think we should tell people what we're talking about. They should just try and work it out. Go to your IKEA and see if you can figure it based on uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Glenn's <laughs> handy background <laughs> that no one can see. Yeah, my, my brother-in-law works at IKEA, so I'll, I'll have that story verified. believe i have not heard a single peep from wife or bub in an hour and a half now that's impressive at that hour of the day um she had a feed just before i came on about seven um six thirty sorry so she had a nice bottle feed and um yeah so i don't know i'm also terrible at listening to her sometimes i'll wake up in the morning and i go oh gee she slept well last night and my wife <laughs> will just give me death stares go, you slept well last night <laughs> I have real. I have realized that there is a difference there. I can. Uh, there is some motherly instinct there. They they really wake up at yeah. any sound. But of course, if yeah. I hear a creaking in the door, of course I wake up. But my wife sleeps through it. So there is some deep embedded uh, genetics there going on. It might be, but I think we're the we're not really like everyone else because I I was the light sleeper and my wife slept through everything she could sleep through <laughs> when our kids were young. So, yeah. At least that's wh- how I remember it. Maybe she'll <laughs> correct me uh, hardly uh, with this. Who knows? Well, I, went, I only went back to work. I had seven weeks off, uh, luckily, uh, after my daughter was born, and that was wonderful. And so, you know, I was, up, nice. I was able to be woken up every couple of hours, but my wife's fantastic. Um, so I work shift work, obviously, uh, including nights. Uh, where I'm away for 14 hours at a time, an hour to work, 12 hour shift, and an hour home. And so it's their long stints when I'm I'm not here, and she's had to now take over that care solo. But I was very grateful to have so much time off. Most dads wouldn't get seven weeks off with their newborn, so that's fantastic. And um, yeah, it, it's been it's been great. But my wife is definitely a light sleeper. She will work wake at the first little noise uh, that the bub makes, whereas I'm able to sleep through it, generally speaking. Um, and when I need to get a decent night's sleep for work at four o'clock in the morning, I just put earplugs in and I'll, I'll sleep through just about anything unless my wife wakes me because she, she really needs my help. So how, how has the, the content creation uh, fared with the new kid as well? Oh, we didn't talk about how, how, do, how do you play? <laughs> yeah, like, I feel that's your, your solution at the moment. It was. It was, <laughs> that that was just... to work fine for you. Well, this is this is good half point material, I suppose, because I was going to bring that up in the main episode, but that's all right. We can do it for this. Um, so uh, another Scandinavian, uh, Mr. Jesper, Jesper makes. He he was another one, just like you, KJ. He came into the Australian woodworking scene through the challenges very early when he had fewer than a hundred subscribers, and I mean, look at him go now. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he has, he makes beautiful content uh, out of Denmark there, and he. I'm not sure what his motivation was. He is full-time YouTube now, and he is very good at researching. He's come a very long way very quickly because he actually bothers to learn how to use a camera and how to tell stories and how to script and how to cut and how to edit. Um, And he's obviously got a natural talent for it. So his videos have done very well, and they deserve to. So he came up with the idea, as far as I'm aware, of getting his seven best projects which already had millions of views between them and all he did was stitch them back to back no editing no voiceover no anything just literally stitch them back to back into a two and a half three hour video long story short they are now approaching four million views good god four million (laughs) views but that's not the story because youtube goes on views and from an outsider's perspective four million is a big number by anyone's standards but It's 4 million views of a nearly three hour long video. And without breaking too many behind the curtain secrets, he's averaging over an hour average watch time on those, as am I. On my three and a half hour long video, I get over an hour per view average. So while my video is sitting at 150,000 views or something, which is bonkers for my channel just to begin with, that's 150,000 watch hours. That is more watch time than I get in a year. So you can imagine what that's done to my revenue in terms of that. 
because the number of ads that can be played uh, and the reason we've come up with as much as we can guess is television. So my three and a half hour long video is, a, it is a story. I did re-edit. I did voiceover. Um, I did some commentary because some of those videos are really, really, really old. And it's the whole story <laughs> from literally day one of everything that I've built for my workshop, all the workshop furniture builds. And I said, my average view is about a thousand is a, a normal video for me. This video has 150,000 and 150,000 hours and has earned more than four figures, less than five. Um, it's just nice. nuts. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> I think it was well-timed for the time of year. Uh, around November, December, people have more time. So they have time to sit and watch a really long video. But from what we can gather is it's the television. YouTube is feeding these very, very long form videos, two and a half plus hour videos to people who are watching YouTube on their TVs. And my logic behind that is if you commit to something on a television with a remote control, you're much more likely to sit through it than on a computer screen where you can click away or God forbid a phone where you have 27,000 distractions and you can just flick off <laughs> instantly. Yeah. And the advertising that you see on a television YouTube video is Coca-Cola, McDonald's. They're all big brands. They're paying a lot of money to have their very well-produced television ads. Whereas when I watch videos on YouTube, you get Dr. Quackface's magic memory pills and investmentscam.com <laughs> and you get these horrible, <laughs> low-budget, crappy ads who are obviously not paying very much. So the revenue you make off a TV audience is much better and that's why YouTube is pushing these, currently it seems, these very, very long-form content. So it makes them lots of money, which is therefore going to make the creator lots of money. <laughs> I'm going to do that as an experiment for it's probably going to be close to Christmas next year, but I'm going to stitch together all my Hellcorder videos and just add a, a separate voiceover track. That's a very low effort and it would be fun because when you say what you're saying, it is interesting because if I lost my phone because one of the kids are glued to it, then of course I turn to the television and then trying to find something interesting with the remote where you have to click, click, click to find uh, the keys on a on-screen keyboard. That's painful. Mm -hmm. So when you find something that you want to watch, then you just leave it. So yeah, that's an interesting take. And if YouTube knows you like maker content and you're watching long form maker content, where most of my views have come have been off like Jesper's video. People will watch Jesper's video because it's genuinely a piece of art that deserves to be watched then yeah. YouTube will serve them automatically playing my video because it's also woodworky, also long form, and people will then sit through that. So it's the click-through rate on that video is less than 2%, which is abysmal. But for some reason, it's still currently is getting 5,000 views a day um, and earning you know a decent amount of money a day um, because it just auto-plays. And it's I was very skeptical to do it because I knew my content quality was nowhere near what Jesper's was, but he just said, James, just do it. Just get it up there. You know, if 10 people watch it, that's still, you know, worth it. And um, he was right. So I would encourage people if you've got a theme um, and you've got, you know, the, the content to do it, that makes sense. You've got to get it over about an hour and a half, but um, yeah, it's fairly low input because you've already made the content and the reward of it is, is quite good. <laughs> Can I throw the two Scandinavians under the bus now? <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> so a couple of months ago, I said, I was thinking about stitching my uh, my instrument bills together. They're like, I hate it when people do that. Here it comes. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I still do. I do hate it. But if And it, you, I mean, it, with it, your it, bloody it, shorts... It works, so yeah. <laughs> Look, I hate AJ it too. I really, I was reticent. Yeah. I really, really didn't want to do it. It took Jesper and Dana bullying me politely, bullying me to do it because I just, I, I personally would not usually watch that sort of content. Um, but you know, people put it on in the background uh, as workshop noise, which I think helps as well. And yeah. like, it paid for Christmas, so you know, it's. Um, nice. I was very reticent to do it. It's not the sort of content I enjoy watching. And this is, this is the big one. It's not the sort of content my subscribers would know watching. And as a lot of my subscribers are friends, I'm really reluctant to subject that to them. You're almost apologetic. I made video going, sorry, I'm doing this, but I've been made to do it, so I will. <laughs> but it's one of those times where it just pays to be selfish. Um, 
so I said it, it's financially it's just been better than taking on any sponsorship deal any stupid laser deal you know it's it's just yeah. been such a good thing it's it's earned me a lot of subscribers i don't honestly expect that to turn into long-term viewers because the kind of people who watch that kind of content aren't going to watch my short shorter form regular 15 minute video content but that's fine the video has done what it was designed to do and that was to take advantage of an audience who i usually don't access um and pay money it, it's it's literally it's a cash grab video and that's what feels so dirty about it there was no reason for doing it other than for the money and it's a lottery i actually i followed it up because that video did so well i made a second one um around gift giving for christmas and it's done very very well it's got nearly ten thousand views which normally for my channel would be astronomically amazing but it's not kicked on like the first one has it's now petered off to basically nothing um so just because you do it doesn't mean it will be successful but there is a chance of reaching a different audience and hopefully your subscribers will forgive you uh, because it's not content made for them. It's content made for the long form TV audience who does exist. And most of us just usually ignore. We have uh, laughed about it at several occasions. I had a couple of videos uh, the last year, which have been a bit outside of the mold. They've been longer and I just been ramping it. It's it got like a, a live feel to it. But after a while, when you're seeing the feedback, that's the videos I get the most comments on from the subscriber that's regularly following because they are in it for the ramblings and the long form. So when you look at the stats, of course, the numbers aren't skyrocketing or anything, but you get a lot of engagement and comments and people saying mm -hmm. that we don't want this shorter cut down content because then we would have gone to TikTok or whatever or watch shorts on instagram so we are here for the ramblings uh, and of course it's uh one thing is the content but it's very much a commentary and i realize that's also in the videos that i see i i enjoy the videos where there's also a commentary track and maybe it's because it is background for my workshop i don't have to constantly watch the screen i can still follow the video while doing something else so it seems to have struck a chord there amongst the, the the people who actually give feedback on the videos and those are the people i, I love doing it for you struck a hell chord yeah, struck, struck it out for yeah. <laughs> Now, I will admit, I haven't watched that yet. I'm, uh, I think I, when I was on a Clamp podcast, I famously said that I'm a racist YouTube watcher uh, because <laughs> the vast majority of the content I watch are small Australian workshop people like myself. Um, so I'm not so small now because they've grown, um, but I don't tend to watch the bigger channels with a couple of exceptions. I do like my Veritasium and I do like Mark Rober because how can you not? Um, but generally speaking, I watch small Australian makers and uh, have got some exceptions. KJ was one of my first exceptions who broke me out of my Aussie bubble. Uh, it was crude but efficient. <laughs> and I will get around to your guys' channels as well, but I am also one of those weird people who live off their subscription feed and I watch it chronologically. Um, so trying to keep up with my subscription feed, watching things chronologically uh, is a challenge. And so I'm also like adding a tool to my workshop, adding a subscription to my feed is a big decision. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to, I've got, I've got, to, got to weigh up if I have time to, to do that. But um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I've heard so much about the Hell Quarter, and I've not watched it yet. But uh, I should need to get it onto the playlist. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're missing out on anything, but uh, it's a, <laughs> it is a struggle. I think every maker faces at some point because, as you said, you could do a five minute. Uh, stunt for a company or something but you will need to put in a lot of hours and of course making a 10 minute youtube video it's days and days not only building something but you're actually doing script work you are doing videos you have to redo some of the things you do because you want different angles on the filming and then of course sometimes you fuck things up and you have to redo things because you forgot to press record or things were out of focus so and that racks up on hours. And of course, I, I don't have the time anymore to watch everything that I want to do on YouTube because mm. I'm also making content for YouTube. And we talked about it a couple of episodes ago, the 
the watch later playlist. That's just an endless <laughs> growing list of things you'll never get around to see. You just, oh, that's interesting. I'll save it for later, but you'll never end up watching it. Yeah, I, I've knocked off like 50 videos or something from that list now during Christmas. So I'm down to 175, I think. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's like nothing. <laughs> how do you, how do you yeah. consume your YouTube, Glenn? Oh, completely randomly. Mm. I, um, so like I do have person. regular, <laughs> yeah, I do have, um, you know, regular subscriptions, but I, I generally watch the people that are closer to me nowadays regularly and everything else is random. I mean, I, I watch all sorts of things from RC cars to somebody making an aeroplane with capacitors. And <laughs> uh, Tom Staunton, I think his name is, he does some great content. Yeah. Just, just complete randomness. But never anything that's related to my work. <laughs> I think I've done that yeah. switch as well. Of course, I do follow some of the bigger channels, but the ones that I watch are people I know and smaller channels. And I have a, a focus on being supportive as well. I, I actively comment and I like because I know it matters. And of course, it's uh, having that connection to the community. So I think... The videos I'm watching now are very specific towards the maker community because I also do interact more with them. Yeah, I, I watch nearly exclusively maker content um, unless I'm sitting down to dinner with the wife and then we'll watch some different things. But uh, I try to comment on just about everything. If it's the 30-second Algo Laser review that I've seen this week, that becomes a little bit challenging. Uh, but you know, and, and the speed at which I watch things again, if I'm watching someone do an unboxing of a tool that I know I'm not interested in, I will still play it, uh, but it'll be more at two times speed in the background off to the side. And I'll still try and follow along and still try and leave a supportive comment when, you know, I get a new, um, you know, Barber's Paddock or Dana made or Jesper makes video, then, you know, we'll sit down and, and watch those at a time when I can dedicate my full attention to it and, and sit back and enjoy what they're doing, uh, as well. So. It's no, still mostly maker, maker content for me, and um, I yeah. try to keep up. And sometimes you really annoy people by delving back five years into their back catalogue and commenting on a video that they've not <laughs> themselves watched in three or four years and now personally <laughs> hate because it was terrible. <laughs> you know. I, I Why are you watching this rubbish? Guys, actually. <laughs> you make it quite easy to comment on your videos, though, James. You're making videos that is, it's, um, they've always got a really nice feel-good vibe about them. I quite, you know... I always come away from watching one of your videos smiling to myself. It's nice. Oh, cheers. Well, it's, it's like everything. Like one of, Actually, I'll, I'll go back one thing to the super long content. One of the things I am absolutely happiest about with the super long content is I said I told the story of my workshop. Like some of the videos at the start, and this was the big risk, they were filmed on a Galaxy S3 Samsung phone five years yeah. ago uh, when I had a single light bulb in my garage and no microphone. And I was very, I did cut them down, especially the talking. I cut out a lot of the talking because it was nearly illegible. But those videos only got hundreds of views over five years. Um, so yeah. very few people saw them. And some of them are actually quite good projects. And so now 150,000 people have seen them, particularly the earlier ones, because the earlier ones, are like the, the normal graph goes down, 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 like people drop off. So my really nice, higher quality videos of that long video, very few people are seeing. They're watching the <laughs> crappy ones from the start where all I had was a drill and a circular saw and terrible lighting and terrible yeah. audio. And um, that's nice to know that those videos, which took an awful long time and were some of the earliest work on my YouTube channel and got zero love, have now had their day. They've, you know, they never have to be seen by another person. So that was a nice feeling to realize that that work had paid back uh, more uh, in in the love, if nothing else. Yeah, no, that is good. I've had um, I've I've been had one successful video, um, wide term successful anyway, and that's certainly brought a lot more views to my first videos. I've say I could say my early videos, but I've only been doing that a year, so they're all early videos, really. <laughs> <laughs> Was it one of your personally worst videos? I find that's a bit of a trend that your first video that goes decent for your channel is always one that you hate and was absolutely awful to make. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely yes. One True. of my first videos, it did do really well <laughs> for me. <laughs> and it, even worse, it did really well in Russia when the war first kicked off. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
my my first decent video that that did a, a good amount of views and still to this day does a reasonable number of views was a Wagner paint sprayer review. I'd never used one before. I was swearing at it the whole time. It was terribly filmed. It was really long and chatty. I was painting the roof of my workshop in a wall and ceiling paint, which is really thick and totally not designed for that style of sprayer. It's a horrible video, horrible all around in every way. And it was my first video to hit 100,000 views. I just couldn't understand why people wanted to watch that, <laughs> that crap. Well, it's, you see, it's quite, I think, especially with the tool review, it's quite it's quite nice to get that honesty coming across, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, I hate this piece of junk. It doesn't work. <laughs> I actually do like the Wagner. Like, I keep using it today. It's just the learning curve on it was a bit hard. <laughs> Are you off to work now? No, I just finished a night shift um, day before yesterday, so oh, I'm on block. Okay. Uh, I'm on block for oh. a few days. I try and get my first non three hour long video in over a month done. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage all the the YouTube, the two jobs, the maintenance, the work for the police, and everything all in one go? Oh, I also and run a, a dun- baby. I, I also run a Dungeons and Dragons professional DM business too uh, on the side as well. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> The, sh- the short answer is tw- the sport- short answer is twelve hour shifts. So right. I'll do a block of four shifts in a in a row, uh, and then yeah. I'll usually work a day shift, a day shift, night shift, night shift, and then spend half a day sleeping, and then I'll have four or five days off, solid. And right. so when you have that block of solid time where you know you're not going to be interrupted, and usually it was on a weekday, so my wife would be at work, I'd have the place to myself, oh, yeah. I'd do my chores, and then I'd I'd have um basically a lot of, of workshop time for my hobbies, uh, which was how I got to where I am. Currently, one of the reasons the super cuts came about was because I had a lot of time in front of the computer nursing a baby and no time in the yeah. workshop. And um, I don't know how that's going to pan out in 2024. Um, my wife will be off work until at least September, and then I'll probably take my father's leave then, but then I'll be full-time caring while my wife goes back to work. So um, there'll probably be less content I've been working up a bit of a backlog too. So with all the gardening stuff, there's a lot of tool reviews for the new garden equipment and um, the content will change. The The projects are, are the what's going to suffer basically because they're the ones that take a yeah. long time. So, but I'll, I'll keep it going. And... I, I just I just think that yeah, we will see even more hand tools from your side because, uh, I mean, I started my YouTube channel while I was uh, on paternity leave with my second kid. Mm. And one of the reasons that I do, don't didn't talk in the, those videos was because I had a toddler somewhere close by, often making sounds and that sort of thing. So then you just, as long as you don't pull out the power tools, they can be, and you can strap them down reasonably. They can be in the workshop with you. But yeah, you don't you don't want to pull out the circular saw or something like that. And because the, head, the earmuffs don't stay on that long on the small ones. When they learn how to rip them off, they, they go flying. <laughs> Yeah. So just my garage, keep using the planes and yeah. chisels and that sort of thing, and it will it will be fine. My, my garage is reasonably far away from the workshop. is reasonably far away from the the house, but um, still can be heard. But it's um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, but you know, I think people are fairly expectant of you know when you have a kid, these things change. But also, I think as makers and YouTubers, particularly small YouTubers, we greatly overestimate how interested people are in us. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> like shh, shh, don't tell me you, you'll go you'll go away and then all, we all have this anxiety and you not make a video for two months and then you'll come back and you'll give this five minute explanation of where you've been for two months and sorry you have not made any content <laughs> and everyone will go like sorry dude i, I, I literally didn't notice yeah. <laughs> but I, I must say it's uh eight weeks that's a that's a very nice period and i have so had I just used a baby call and then I went down to the workshop whenever the baby was asleep. So I, I got a lot of things done. And of course, now they are three and five, which is a, it's a nice period because they're now getting their personalities, but it's also a challenge because they're getting their personalities. And <laughs> of course, they, they think it's fun to watch videos on the tablet, on the phone, on the television or whatever. And then they realize, oh, it's daddy on the phone. And then they see themselves because we film them a lot. And then, of course, they have another relationship with screen than I have, of course. And then 
when they see their dad outside with a tripod. Ooh, dad is outside with the screen. And then they come running, of course. And it's a bit... I don't know how to make of it because I want them to be a part of the workshop. So I want them to, whenever they want to fix something, I want them to do that. And I just help them just make sure they don't hurt themselves. But then, of course, it's the YouTuber in me like, but this is content. But I I want to protect them from social media until they are actively uh, wanting to seek it out for themselves and they reach to that point that they actually can reflect upon what it is and what they are getting into and they're not old enough for that so i'm trying to spare them so i don't show them on videos i don't use them for any content but of course every time i'm doing something they're like "Ooh, that is doing something cool which ends up on the screen and then they come running so i have a lot of footage where i'm mid monologue or building something and it's like daddy in the background waving and <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's uh that's gonna be for a family blooper reel <laughs> a few years ahead <laughs> yeah it's hard to keep them out yeah we're, we're consciously like I, i'm not putting any public photos of my daughter up uh, at all i've sort of made one little post where i put a smiley face over her face um it's just a being in the public public light um myself and until as i said she's old enough to make her own choices about such things um we're keeping her keeping her off and she won't be in any of the videos or i'll refer to her of course but no i yeah. w- want to keep that line pretty hard yeah. i mentioned yeah. my daughter's name in um, the podcast a couple of weeks ago but luckily it was my edit so that was removed <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what what do you do when you make videos sometimes i have to edit out because the house number is showing and that's one of my guilty pleasures, if I don't have any specific thing I want to watch on YouTube, I have these uh, geo people uh, trying to figure out where people are just by uh, getting pictures. And of course, the professional people can really pick out, of course, where you are located. So I, I think one of the professionals would probably take two minutes uh, into my, one of my videos and they could probably pinpoint where I'm living fairly accurate but still i have this okay i don't i don't show my kids i don't mention their names and of course i always angle the camera so you don't see the house numbers and so on i don't know how do do any of you have that thought process when you're filming well it's impossible for me because in australia at least my business is registered to my home address so anyone who (laughs) goes onto the australian business government registry can find out where i live uh, that's yeah. just one of, I mean, I could change it. A lot of people have a PO box to avoid that because you must have a, a registered address, but yeah. this is the only one I've got. Uh, so if anyone wanted to find me, no, I don't know. But a, do you guys, no one's ever explained it to me. Like in Australia, you can't track people's registration plates. I've often had Americans tell me, oh, we can see your rego plate on your car. And why didn't you blur out your number plate on your car? And I'm going, well, because why? Yeah, well, in, in oh. Norway, you can go to the the DMV's webpage and just uh, put in the number. And of course, uh, you will get the, the car and make and year and everything. And also, uh, if you log in with your personal like ID number, your national ID number, then you can also get the information who owns the car uh-huh. and their address. That, and I so thought it must be something like that. So it's like very that. Yeah. easy so to you, find you all the here. information. Yeah, you yeah. can't hear it. Well. And that's no. the same. I no, have... Yeah. I have not a registered uh, phone number, so you can't find my name in the yellow pages and so on. But of course, I do have a company. And then there's an open policy in Norway that everything is accessible. Uh, who's the owner of the company and your address yeah. and some. Yeah, and that's of why course, mine's public. I, I'm at that point where I'm also looking into establishing a web shop for the things that I make that I could actually sell. But once I do that crossover, when I'm then linking a YouTube video to actually a company selling something, of course, then there's no problem finding out both my uh, <laughs> last name and where I live and everything. So that's... Uh... Well, kind of helps me with the last name in the title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a hard search to find where I, where I live, so I don't really care about that. Uh, and I... I try to keep the kids out of it 
unless they're really really cute uh, <laughs> and it uh, and it fits the uh, the narrative it was actually really nice meeting your family in the last video you did kj actually i think that was uh, that was enough of it i think yeah. uh, my <laughs> wife reacted when she actually saw the video oh there's my butt on youtube <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah it was close at least so <laughs> we're glad at that that shot was just for glenn <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but now I have to actually like pronounce Havard. <laughs> well, I've not done it right yet, so. <laughs>